Welcome back to the county seat. We've been discussing emergency management here uh, with our guests from Salt Lake County, Tooele County, and from the state. Um, Mike, let's, let's just throw this out here. Um, if you can't count on government, and it's not any fault of the government, it's in a major disaster, uh, what is the mindset you have to have to survive a disaster? I think step one is taking ownership of the situation, believing that you are at risk, we're in a window of vulnerability, and that you are responsible for yourself and your family and your neighborhood. And once you take ownership of that, then there are a lot of avenues you can pursue. There's training that you can get, and I think Jeff has a good uh, uh, understanding of the community emergency response team. Mm -hmm. I know they're very active out in Tooele, family and individual preparedness. And then it's always important to have folks understand that sometimes warnings are inaccurate, but we take them seriously. Whether it's a, a weather-related warning for a severe winter storm mm -hmm. or fire warning, earthquake preparedness, we need to take those seriously. A good level, common sense, level-headed approach is best. Okay, well, let's, let's talk about training because, you know, when, when Mike said that to me, Jeff, my first response was, okay, I can take ownership of a disaster, but you know, am I going to be like a deer in the headlights? What do I do? You know, how do you, I mean, how do you prepare? What is CERT? Well, CERT, um, CERT is a uh, community type training. Um, the, the fire departments um, are generally the component that provides the training. And what it does is it gives uh, individuals, citizens, regular citizens, the opportunity to um, get some basic first responder kinds of training so that they know how to respond to this kind of a disaster. It teaches them how to sling a broken limb. It teaches how to uh, put a bandage around a wound, how to make some determinations as to uh, who needs care immediately and who can wait and, and basically create a, a, an assessment of their situation. Um, it provides them the ability to do some light search and rescue you know, get, get a piece of uh, debris off of an individual and be able to rescue them and get them to safety. And so when that event hits, if you've had the opportunity to get some training, exercise that training, you're going to be much better prepared. You're going to be more second nature to be able to deal with the problem opposed to allowing panic to set in and then not being able to get any help to anybody and being frankly useless to the emergency. Okay, Wade, in Tooele County, I understand that you guys are fairly active in CERT. How, how early of an age should people start that training? Well, there's a program called Teen CERT. We haven't utilized that in Tooele County yet, but uh, adults 18 and above, uh, we invite to participate in the program. And, and the whole idea behind that is we use the term first responder, you know, in, in talking about our police and fire and ambulance. But in my opinion, the first responder is the, the person on scene, the victim, if they're even conscious or able to do something about it, witnesses to a, an accident or an emergency. They're the true first responders. Mm -hmm. And it's important, like, like Jeff says, that they have some skills, even just the, the wherewithal to pick up the phone and call 911 in, in a daily situation. But uh, overall, you know, it, it's the public's responsibility to be prepared for emergencies and disasters. And the more the public is, is uh, is prepared, the further our government resources will reach in a disaster. How do you assess and, and respond to people that are disabled or, or have you know, special challenges and, and, and can't take care of themselves? We have about a minute for that. Yeah, these vulnerable populations, we call them, really has become one of the battle cries of modern emergency management. Uh, first of all, we have to identify who they are and where they are and what their needs are in the event of a disaster. Uh, if they uh, are not able to hear, how do we provide a warning to them? If they have mobility issues, how do we do that? A lot of it boils down to local government, neighbors and friends looking after one another. That's the foundation upon which everything else is built. The uh, community emergency response team, I just want to add one of the really neat things about that training. Mm -hmm. It's hands-on. It's not sitting in a classroom. You actually have a fire in the fire pan. You use the fire extinguisher to put it out. You actually do the bandaging do the light, very light search and rescue. It's good stuff. Excellent. It comes down to having family plans and including in, uh, all of the, everybody in the plan, 
you know, your, your special needs neighbors, your relatives, and having a, an overall family and individual disaster plan in place. Great. Let's talk about that more when we come back. We'll wrap this up. It's been a great conversation. We'll be back with the county seat in just a minute. Thank you. What is play? Is it culture? Is it adventure? Is it... Ooh, uh, it's a destination. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's right. That's correct. Cedar City and Brian Head Resort in the heart of Iron County where outdoor excitement, culture, and the iron industry melt together. Come and forge a new adventure where play is the thing. You haven't forgotten how to play. It's just that you haven't been to the right place yet. The State of Utah School and Institutional Trust Lands Administration. CITLA manages 3.5 million acres of Utah lands with the express purpose of furthering the education of Utah students while promoting local industry, oil and gas, even residential development, all at the same time. Through the careful use of trust lands, we distributed more than $22 million to Utah schools last year. The State of Utah School and Institutional Trust Lands Administration, building the state's permanent school fund. If you look up epic in the dictionaries, defined as heroic, majestic, or impressively great. Here in Kane County, Utah, we don't need a dictionary to tell us that. We live it every day. Stop reading about life and start experiencing it in Kane County. ATV adventures, Jeep excursions, hike a world where the Old West was yesterday and tomorrow is just over the horizon. Kane County, Utah, where epic is more than just a word, it's our way of life. Take a look, take a glimpse, take a peek. You'll be surprised by what you find. Check us out at DesertPcomplex.com. Our phone number is 435-843-4020. Adventure, beauty, excitement. Tooele County Parks and Recreation. Bringing communities together.